hello and welcome back to the channel i'm your host isaiah as always and today i will be predicting the nfl it's been a while since i've done predictions just got really busy wanted to start making madden videos and yeah but we are back i decided i was gonna i was gonna come back and make prediction when the playoffs rolled around and we have an interesting playoffs i mean multiple backup quarterbacks play multiple black backup quarterbacks playing multiple sh shocking team let's get into it so i'm gonna do this in order based on when the games happen so starting off on saturday midday football we have the san francisco 49ers taking on the seattle seahawks these two teams have already met twice and neither one of their competitions were in any way shape or form close now if the niners are going to win this game it's going to be forcing brock Purdy to make mistakes because he's not a good quarterback sorry it's not that great. And it's also going to... Hold on. It's also going to come down to getting deep shots. The safeties are probably the weakest part of all that stout 49ers defense. But you're not going to be able to get that when you got Nick Bosa right in your face. So, for all those reasons, the Niners are probably one of the... There might be the most talented team in the league. That's why. Up next, we have the Jags and Chargers. This will be on Saturday Night Football. This is going to be an intriguing game. These two teams met earlier in the season where the Jags pummeled the Chargers. It wasn't a close game. It was by like 28 points. But I think we're going to see a bit of a different outcome here. The Chargers were in their practice squad. They had a banged up Justin Herbert starting, throwing to actually Walmart employees. And no Nick Bosa. Not Nick. Joey Bosa. And for the Jags, they've obviously have gotten better and have gotten on a hot streak and... They're one of the hotter teams in football. But still, I like the Chargers here to win. Simply put it, I think Herbert is a bit more clutch than Lawrence. And I think it's going to be a back and forth game. But I think Herbert's just going to have that slight bit more clutch in him in order to win this game. And he's got better weapons. All right, moving on. Keep this short and sweet. I don't want to insult my team, but we're starting Skylar Thompson. No Raheem Moster. Teron Armstead might not play. Tyree Kill is questionable. Jalen Waddle is questionable. And the Bills are one of the best teams in the league. Enough said. All right. Moving, moving on to Sunday midday football. We have the Giants taking on the Vikings. This is a very, very intriguing game. These two teams met earlier in the year pretty recently, and it was a very close game. It was pretty back and forth. But the Vikings still remain undefeated in close games, one-score games. That does concern me heading into the playoffs, but I look at this Giants team, and their biggest problem is they cannot stretch the field. They don't have good weapons. Kenny Galladay, he had that nice catch. I'll give that to him. But he has been very, very bad. And very hated by Giants fans because of how much they paid him to do nothing. And in terms of that, their receiving core has been banged up. And just stretching the field is going to be hard. In terms of the Vikings, on the other hand, they have the best receiver in the league. And they got Dalvin Cook. And the Giants, I guess, have Saquon. But I'm talking two-minute drill. This is what this game is going to come down to. The reason the Vikings are so good in the, in the two-minute drill is because they got Justin Jefferson and Kirk Cousins' connection. That's why I'm going to take the Vikings to win this game. Should be a close game, though. Up next on Sunday Night Football, we have the Bengals and the Ravens. This is an interesting game because we do not know if Lamar is playing or not. If Lamar is not playing, it's going to be a blowout. End of discussion. We watched this hap We watched this a few days ago. It's The result's not going to change. It's been four days since these two teams have played. And if Lamar is not there. But even if Lamar is there, it's been like a month since he's played football. Since he's actually been in a football game. It's going to take time to adjust, and against a Bengals team that will strike, they're not going to let you do that. The Ravens have a good defense, but injuries have ruined them. I would like to see a season where the Ravens are not ruined by injuries every year. Give me the Bengals, because they are one of the hottest teams in football. I'm going to see the Cowboys and the Bucks. This game, I've been seeing a lot of people going with the Bucks because of the whole don't count out Brady and the Nair. Don't count out Brady. The Cowboys haven't beat Brady. The Cowboys are always first-round exit. And a lot of people aren't confident in them because of that abysmal performance that they showed. But, but, there are some good things about this team. 
when Dak is starting there, one of the most efficient offenses in the league, and I have the, some of the most points per game. A lot of people want Kellen Moore gone. He's a great offensive coordinator. Many teams would rather have them. Steelers. So, yeah. And, 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 the Bucks have not been good this year. They're a, they have a losing record. They don't have a run game. They do not have an O-line. It's completely banged up. Their receivers are inconsistent. Brady has not been playing at his best. And the defense is old. So yeah, I'm going to take the Cowboys. All right, up next, we got the Bengals and the Bills. I don't know how these are going to go, so I'm just going to go left to right. Bengals and Bills. Here's the matchup we've been waiting for. These two teams played earlier in the season, but because of the unfortunate DeMar Hamlin incident, thankfully he's been getting better. They did not get to finish this game. The Bengals were looking like the better team as that game was going. I'm not going to let that game judge how I feel about this game, though, because there was still three quarters of football to play. That's a lot of football to play. It's hard for me to pick who I think is going to win this game, but I am going to go with the Cincinnati Bengals. There's some reasons behind this. Whatever they say, listen, Bills fans are confident they're going to get Micah Hyde back. When was the last time Micah High played? It does not matter if he, or is it Jordan Park? It's one of their really good safeties. It's been a while since they played. They're not going to instantly be difference makers. DeMar Hamlin, who was a starter, will obviously not be playing. You have to be able to lock down every Bengals receiver. And they have Joe Burrow. The thing that the Bills are going to have to do is they're going to have to get to Burrow. The old line's been getting a bit banged up. And, and the Bengals cannot establish a run game. The Bills' strategy in this game should be to ground and pound. They have an underrated run game with a very good running quarterback and some very efficient backs. Not good, efficient. They're averaging like five yards a carry. But I do not see... I, I'm going to see a world where this game is going back and forth. But the Bills do what they did against Kansas City. And they're not able to stop Burrow and the Bengals, who have a better receiving core. And Burrow's looked like the best quarterback in the league for the past few weeks. Stop them with like a minute left in the game, and they're going to score. That's where I see this game going. Bengals win. Up next, we have Chiefs of the Chargers. This is a divisional rivalry. Chiefs won both games, but they were not convincing wins. I mean, they were wins, but none of them were blowouts. And considering how the Chiefs like to treat the rest of the division, yeah. Chargers put up pretty good fights in, against the Chiefs, so I expect this game to be close. But Mahomes on a week of rest, yeah. They've never missed the AFC Championship with him. I have no reason to believe that this will be the moment that he does. Mahomes, AFC Championship time. Up next, we got the Cowboys and the Eagles. Ooh, another divisional rivalry. These two teams split, but this is the real game. Jalen Hurts versus Dak Prescott. This is what everyone's been waiting for. Both of these teams have played. They split. But each time the other team has won, it's been with a backup quarterback as their, their opponent. This is the real deal. This is Jalen Hurts versus Dak Prescott. These are the two healthy versions of this team. No excuses for either of these teams. Philadelphia is winning. Philadelphia is one of the most complete teams in the league. Their only concern is the banged up O-line, o which I think Micah Parsons and Demarcus Lawrence will abuse a bit, and Dan Campbell will be able to cook up a scheme. Still, when receivers like A.J. Brown is becoming a top five receiver in the league. He arguably is, and he is so hard to cover. And even if you lock him down, he's one of the best contested catch receivers in the league. And then, to wrap it all up, they only have, like, the best run game in the league when they have Jalen Hurts starting. It's almost impossible to stop them on third and fourth and short, which is, when you're, which is the times you beat teams. They have a solid defense. It's going to be a good game, but I think the Eagles are going to win. Up next, we got the Niners and the Vikings. Very, very, very interesting game. Here's my problem with the Vikings going into this game. Niners win, by the way, I'll tell you. Here's my problem with the Vikings. They come in with a negative point differential. Because every time they win, besides that last game against Nathan Peterman, has been by one score. Every time they lose, though, to win by multiple possession. Now let's listen to this. They have one of the worst defenses in the league. Probably the worst defense out of any team in the playoffs. And yes, the Dolphins are in it. The Dolphins defense sucks. But I think that the Vikings defense is even worse. 
McCaffrey has been insane for the Niners. Debo's great. Ayuk's great. Kittle's great. The O-line is great. Brock Perry does not have to do anything. And the defense will stop Kirk. They'll stop Jefferson. They are going here's the Vikings will constantly have be playing catch up, which they will not be able to do because the Niners will continuously ground and pound and not let that offense get the ball. And when they do get the ball, they're not going to be able to move it on that defense. That's why the Niners are winning. Up next, we have a we have a rematch from last year: the Bengals and the Chiefs. The these teams met earlier in the year. Burrow has had Mahomes number multiple times this year, but this could be a different game. And Arrowhead, you know how the Chiefs do. They are Chiefs Kingdom will go crazy this game, but. Burrow has had Mahomes number. Bagels to the Super Bowl. Not just that. I'm really just looking at how well this team matches up against KC. You're not the receivers are very hard to guard. The Chiefs the Chiefs defense is mid. It's very mid. There besides Chris Jones, there's no other very like special piece on there, but nothing really outlandishly bad. It's a relatively mid defense. It's better than what they had last year, which should help them. But in the grand scheme of things, regardless of how good of a season Mahomes has had, I feel like the loss of Tyreek Hill is going to catch up to them. I feel like the Bengals, there's going to be moments where the Bengals are going to score right before half or at the end of the game. And the Chiefs can't do it because they don't have Tyreek to stretch the field. They don't have Tyreek for the speed to be respected. As a Dolphins fan who has watched every single one of their games, I know the impact Tyreek Hill has. He makes the defenses stretch the field. He makes it very easy for other receivers to get open. They don't have that this game. And I do not believe they win this game. And I'm going to say the Eagles and the 49ers. This is going to be a really interesting game. Eagles, Niners. Two, two teams that have been absolutely dominant. The Niners... 10 straight wins. They have not lost since October. And the Eagles are the number one seed. They were undefeated for a very long time until they eventually lost to the Commanders. And with the glaring problem of Brock Purdy on the Niners, he's not going to elevate this team. But he's not going to need to. Yeah, that's right. I have two one seeds getting knocked out of the divisional round. Conference championship. I do not believe Brock Purdy needs to elevate this team. He just needs to do what he's been doing all year. They have won 10 straight, and most of their wins have been in dominant fashion. The Eagles, the Eagles O-line has been banged up. Guess who they have to block? Nick Bosa. They can get away with it with Dallas, because Dak will make dumb interceptions. It's what he does. Brock Purdy will not, because he plays in an easy system. That's the difference. Niners win. And now to end off the playoffs between I have a Bengals Niners Super Bowl. Two of the two of the hottest teams in the league. And they have both they have both, I think they both have earned their way here. They're it's going to be tough. But the Bengals had the harder path. I think they finish it. Bengals win. And there's good reasoning behind this, but it's the grand scheme of things. Remember what I said about the Niners, the Seahawks needing to beat the Niners over top because the safety is the weakest part? The Bengals can do that, and I have full faith that they will. They will get two big explosive plays, probably a 50-yard touchdown and like a big bob to get them in the red zone. That's the difference there. And Brock Purdy will not be able to elevate this team enough to play keep up. So yeah, that's going to be all. That's that is my final playoff bracket. So if you all enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe, and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.